Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we have Eric, no nickname Peterson, second day of his kids having to be home from school. Eric, how are you? <laughs> Doing good. Just uh, trying to keep focus here with the kids running around in and out, enjoying the snow here. So, Is it a snow day? It, yes, it's a snow day today. I never had one of those. It's not global warming, it's global weirding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we got Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland Aaron, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, we only had a two-hour delay, so not quite as bad as Eric. That's not bad at all. And then, of course, the big papa himself. I love it when you call me big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Good. Finally feeling recovered since, uh, since boot camp. So. Okay, seriously? Because, like, Eric and I are still dragging. How are well, you I'm, recovered? Well, I'm tired. Don't get me wrong. I had to take you know, naps yesterday because I was exhausted. I came home Sunday night, and I slept – I went to bed at like 8.30, and I slept till 8 in the morning. I was exhausted. And, and you didn't get any, in any trouble with the wife? No. She was pretty – she was understanding, understanding of the whole situation. I mean, we worked. No, we, we work. It's, it it's work. It's hard it's work. Hard, it's like the most stressful part of my, uh, my life right now is boot camp prep. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of talk. It's a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, the older I get, the longer it takes me to recover. Like it used to be like, you know, I, I remember like the first few boot camps, I would actually have a few things going on on Monday and like now, nah, like Monday's total day off. Yeah. And then I come to Tuesday. It's like, Oh gosh, I got stuff to do. And then like, there's no energy there. So tired. But Eric, you're a young guy. How are you feeling? I'm tired still. I, uh, you know, I, I got in late on Sunday. Um, by the time I got home, it was after nine. So, you know, I didn't get to bed till 10 and, um, I slept in the next day, uh, trying to catch up a little bit, but, um, still feeling it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So on the topic of boot camp. It was our largest boot camp. We had like what ninety people in the room at one time, including uh, all of us. Yeah. So it was big, but didn't feel too big. It still felt intimate, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think the room accommodated everybody very well, and um, yeah, it it felt good. It was big, but but I think it was good. Well, let's talk about. Uh, the boot camp takeaways. What were the biggest boot camp takeaways for you? Let's start with you, Eric Peterson. For me, I, you know, oftentimes it's it's just about um, kind of meeting people in the business, putting a you know, uh, I, I guess you can't say a face to the name because we see each other a lot and mastermind calls and things like that. But but actually being able to shake someone's hand or or meet them in person, um, you know, it, it just adds another kind of level to those, those people we see on a regular basis. Um, and then of course all the new faces as well. Um, that's, that's typically a, a big takeaway for me on top of that. Um, you know, I, there's always something that I walk away from boot camp, Um, and you know, I kind of set myself to accomplish in my business over the next month or, or two. Um, and for me, this time it's it's really um focusing on the acquisition side and and systematizing a lot of that and and bringing in an acquisition manager and um stepping out of a big portion of that part of my business yeah that's huge that's huge a uh, barely Aaron, I think it's unfair to ask you what your biggest boot camp takeaway was from San Antonio, but you how many boot camps have you been to uh two two okay, so or from three. the two that you two, or think. three I think it's two. Wait, yeah. three. Uh, Orlando, what were you, what were, and Orlando and Scottsdale. Scottsdale. So what were your yeah. biggest takeaways at, at boot camp? Um, well, the first one's always huge just because it's all new. 
So you're trying to assimilate all of that information, you know. Um, the second one was really cool because um, you get to reinforce the things that you've learned previously at a previous one or, you know, through coaching, um, through mastermind calls, that sort of thing. But you always get um, those things that kind of can help bring you back to basics that you forgot, you know, obviously not the main parts of the system, the mailing and marketing and that sort of thing. I mean, that's an obvious, but those little things you're like, Oh yeah, if we do this, it will, you know, help us with that, that kind of thing. I totally forgot about that and bringing those little things home. And then of course, you know, you always get the nuggets that Scott talks about. Um, boot camp's just an amazing experience. Um, no matter which time you go, I think. Yeah. Yeah. How about for you, Tate? You know, one of the things that I found really interesting was uh, the fact that in the VIP room, somebody mentioned that when they have that initial contact with a seller, one of the things that they do is they walk them through the closing process ahead of time. And they say, listen, here's how we're going to close the deal. And they tell them, they don't even give them the option to, you know, look at using a third party for uh, the deed or recording or anything like that. They would just say simply, Mark, when we decide, when we agree upon a price, I'm going to email you a deed. You're going to print it. You're going to take it to the nearest bank near you. You're going to send it back to me and I'm going to record it. And I thought that's really, really good advice right there. Because how many times have people gone all the way through the due diligence process only to find out that their seller won't sign a deed unless um, they get paid ahead of time, right? And they run into right. these hiccups. Well, with one simple phrase on the initial contact, all of a sudden, you know if that person's willing to play ball with you according to your rules. And you can decide right then and there if it's worth your time or not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, I had, I had uh, an observation and then I had a, a takeaway. Um, my, my big observation that was different from this boot camp, from, pe from previous boot camps, are the flight school people. And the flight school people, um, there's a different dynamic because their level of knowledge coming in is like crazy deep. And then they're getting reinforced with the fundamentals at boot camp. And there's like that different feel um, at, at in, in the room now where it's uh, they're kind of like, yeah, now let's go a little, you know, a little faster, a little deeper here. And um, in, in sort of like into the deal flow and, you know, getting the list, scrubbing the list where it used to be like the big pain point that everybody would have like these questions about the list, the list, the list, the flight school people don't have that. Um, their, their questions are more, uh, you know, more macro now about just, you know, the systems and the automation and the delegation and, uh, you know, the closing. And it's, it's really interesting to see how that has evolved. Like pain points are evolving after bringing in flight school people and, uh, and doing all of that. And then, uh, my biggest takeaway I think was just how much, uh, money is to be made in this little niche, right? Because like the Ewan brothers are like, oh yeah, we're going to make about $200,000 on this one deal. And then Bay's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like she's closing like these big $30,000 flips. And John Montero's like, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, doing like a million dollars on eight deals this year. And like, so you've got people who are like the bread and butter deals, like the wholesale deals. And then people doing like these bigger deals. And it's just really interesting to see how that's sort of evolved where there's something really for everyone as long as they'll execute, right? Which is kind of like the bottom line there. Um, did you see that, guys? Did you feel that at all in the room? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, absolutely. There's so much opportunity in this business. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it was kind of it was like overwhelming at, at some points. Like just yeah, no. some of the stories, like, you know, Lydia comes up to me. She's like, we closed six deals this week. I'm like six deals. She's like, I love Tate. I'm like what's going on? And then I, you know, I'm like, we didn't close six deals this week. <laughs> <laughs> Comparison's the theme of happiness. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the one thing I noticed 
in terms of the room, um, like you were talking about flight school and stuff. I mean, I was very impressed with um, the knowledge of the room. I mean, thinking about the interactive sec, uh, sessions that we, that we go through and um, the presentations that were made and, and how thorough and thoughtful they were. Um, you know, I mean, they did a great job. Yeah, Elisa Rapier and uh, Brian Rapier. I like big lots, and I cannot lie. So here, this is like on the on the Saturday interactive session. That was like the winning headline. It was awesome. I love it. Little uh, is that Sir Mix a Lot? Sir Mix a Lot. Yep. Yeah, there. But everybody else, you know, the 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 depth of knowledge in there was like crazy, and it was almost like we saw in the surveys the interactive sessions. We need to kind of like make tougher for them. And we need to kind of do that differently because uh, the flight school people need something even just a little bit tougher, it sounded like. Like it was too basic for them. Which in past boot camps, we haven't had that issue. Like people love the interactive sessions and it reinforces all this information that they're learning throughout the weekend. But flight school, they're, they already kind of have it. So well, now that, you're going to have, you're gonna have to balance that uh, between people who are coming to boot camp with you know, very little knowledge compared to people that have been through flight school, you know, will, will you start to lose the people who are just beginning and that sort of thing? Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe you just, you pair up with a flight school person and like, you know, at, at networking times, like you just talk to them and I don't know, I don't know how you, how you bridge that because, you know, we only have so much time and we can't, Right. Kind of, you know, meet, you know, we can't be like at flight school level. If you just got done with the toolkit, you'll be drinking from a fire hose and your eyes will start <laughs> bleeding. You know, <laughs> right. so, uh, but you know, I, I do think that there's always value. And we've heard it from the flight school people. Like it's always valuable to reinforce the fundamentals, the fundamentals, the fundamentals, because they start getting into the weeds as they start growing their businesses and, and building the systems and automation. So um, one of the overarching questions that we kept seeing time and time again with the Grill the Geeks module were our business expenses. Like, what are your business expenses? Like, yeah, I, I see how, you know, the gross numbers, but what are the net numbers in this business? So Eric Peterson, when you first started out, like, what were your biggest expenses? Um, when I first started, I mean, probably probably mailing and it, it probably is still one of the larger expenses today. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think what a lot of people um, kind of begin to worry about or get, get cautious about in our business is that we use a whole lot of um, different subscription based services. Um, you know, whether that's, um, you know, your lob for your mailings or you're using, um, you know, uh, the various land sites or land moto, or you've got, um, convert kit or MailChimp, or, I mean, there's so many different arenas where, you know, we have to, um, basically pay to play. Right. Um, and those add up. So I think early on, um, it gets a little bit hard to make some of those decisions as to, to which ones to use and which ones to, to wait on and, and things like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think mailing tends to be a, one of the biggest expenses, but it's also, you know, one of the most important things. Um, and on the marketing side, you know, we have um, lots of kind of small subscription fees for different pieces we use to, uh, to be able to post to those Craigslist accounts. Right. So, right. right. Up. So looking at your numbers, I mean, what are you like net? Are you 30%, um, you know, yeah, I don't business 40%. I don't have a good answer for that right now. I don't have a, I don't have that in a way I can, I can give you an idea. Um, yeah, I can say, because usually like an average company like rents the biggest expense. Right. I can say that outside of my VAs right now, 
my current monthly expenses are probably around 1700 bucks with all my subscriptions and mailing. So, um, you know, I don't know what that works out to on a, on a net basis, but at least it's, uh, a figure to look at. No, I think that's a good, a good figure. How about you be Bearland Aaron? Um, expense wise at the beginning, it was definitely, uh, you know, the mailing and the acquisition of the land itself. Um, now, you know, obviously land acquisition is still a pretty big expense. Um, if you really want to call it that, I don't know if you really want to call it that though. Um, because I would say now our, really our largest kind of expense is our, um, still actually mailing and, uh, the, you know, my VAs, um, those are, those are my two big ones. Um, I was just, I pulled up my books here, um, cost of goods sold, which is, you know, going to be the land, uh, for the most part, maybe a little bit for, uh, paying back taxes when you purchase the land, that sort of thing. Um, that's pretty big too, but that's, I mean, that's, that's the land. So that's, um, you know, I don't know. And like, like Eric, I'm not really sure on, you know, percent wise. Um, I don't have really that, that information broke down. So, um, but, but yeah, I, th you know, we do have a lot of, you know, subscriptions and stuff. So VAs, the, the cost of goods sold and, um, software as a service are, you know, what you're really looking at now, depending on how much, how many boot camps you do, um, continuing ed and, or travel can get up there from time to time. Uh, but you know, it, you can control that whether you go or not. So. Yeah. That's an expense, apparently, Aaron. That's a huge investment. That's a 10x ROI. At least. I know. <laughs> I know. Education is a great, you know, great investment. <laughs> um, but I get it. I get it for sure. Uh, how about you, Tate? You know, it's a good question. Um, I just want to tell everybody I've, I stole Tate's uh, name for his office now because I have now, where the two of us are working out of the garage mahal, the not garage the garage office. Mahal. The garage mahal. I love that. Yes. I've got incense burning. I've got chicken tikka masala over here. I mean, it's the garage mahal. Have you set up your Zen den area though? No, no, <laughs> I have not set up the Zen den area. You need to set yet. up the Zen den area. That that completes the garage mahal, right? But no, I will. Uh, I will. That's nice. yeah. It's a must have. It's a must have. Yeah, and it'll definitely increase productivity. I guarantee it. Ten x it. Okay, I'm in it. I'm I'm doing it. So my business is that a bean bag and some curtains or bean bag. Maybe you want to have a little bonsai plant going on a nice <laughs> tranquil area with a, uh, I don't know. I'm going to get like one of those little rock waterfalls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a waterfall. Lots of plants, you know, calming colors. I think we could all take a page out of Scott's book and get some lights. You know, those lights he has that, that change colors. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what what the, the, the Phillips hue lights. Yeah. Maybe we need those in our Zen den. It's not a bad idea. Oh, wait. Yeah, some of them play music. Are we even talking about Zen? What are we talking about right now? <laughs> no, no, we're talking about your expenses. What's your uh, biggest expense? I, well, I mean, the Zen Den doesn't cost. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> right. uh, my busy, biggest expense would be um, mailing still. You know, we, we're mailing around 1,000 offers a month, and uh, I'm set up through a plan on LOV that uh, I think it costs $800 monthly. Uh, but I don't even view it as an expense anymore, Mark, because I, I just know that it's something that has to happen in order for the business to grow. And all I need to do is get one deal out of that and I'm going to make my money back, right? My VAs are expensive. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. I, I mean, I think the answer is for everybody to go through Scott Todd's accounting course where he kind of walks you through this profit first method of, you know, here's what he allocates to reinvestment, here's what he allocates to fixed expenses, which are going to be your mailing, right? Um, you're, everyone's going to have to have some type of internet connection, right? Um, but otherwise, like there'll be other variable expenses. Like 
you know, if, if you do, if you've got more than two notes, you might have a geek pay subscription of 49 bucks a month. You should right? have a geek but, pay subscription. Yeah, but that's automating it. That you, now you're not, you're saving yourself time and actually geek pay. If you do it right, it's a profit center. So that's not even an expense. Um, but if you have, let's say, uh, you know, convert kit, right. Or yep. a Weber, that would be a monthly expense. So your, your SAS expenses could, you know, get up there in, in the beginning. Um, and then you've got to yeah. figure out your owner's pay so you can, you know, take money out of the business as well and then profit. Another expense could be, you know, simply requesting deeds from the County, right? That's, Right. $5 here, $5 there. And depending on the volume that you're doing, that can add up. And it's something people forget, but I don't know. It's a mindset, right? If you go into it knowing that, yeah, I'm going to have to spend a little bit of money. It's still cheaper than closing through title, but uh, ultimately it'll be in my best interest. I'm okay doing it. In fact, I'm looking for ways to simplify my life. And if that means another subscription then bring it on, right? I've got no problem with it. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's great about this business is that it has such high margins, such really low fixed overhead because you can do it from anywhere in the world. You need an inexpensive laptop, you need an internet connection and really, you know, that's about it. You don't want to mail. You don't have to mail. You go buy wholesale deals, right? Um, if you didn't want to. So there's lots of ways to do it, but I think ultimately um, you, you need to kind of like look at it from a profit first perspective for long-term planning, but I, I'm like Tate now. I'm like, I'll buy almost anything that'll save me time. I can always make more money. I can't get more time. And what's interesting is like, you look at a note, like I was, I was having a, a conversation last night with my buddy who's like sort of in the, uh, the, the Mr. Money mustache mode of just like having like no expenses in his life. Right. Like he wants to pay off his house as fast as possible. He wants to have like, you know, no car and like no expenses. I'm like, Man, my my customers who are paying on my uh, my notes for my land, they pay everything in my life. I don't pay for cable. You know, John Smith, who's paying 199 bucks a month for this five acre parcel, is paying my cable bill, right? And so, once you have that kind of in a in a good place, like it's 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 you see things kind of differently. Does that make sense, or am I just rambling? Nope, perfect sense. Eric's like, zippy the lippy. Let's get to <laughs> tips of the week. <laughs> so that brings us to tips of the week. Uh, and Eric, what's your tip of the week? Oh, my, oh, before I go to the tips of the week, Philip Ma had a great suggestion at boot camp. He's like, no more tips of the week. No more new tips of the week. It's too many. It's overwhelming. I'm in the car and there's five or six tips of the week. I can't even write them down fast enough. I'm overwhelmed. Enough. So I think we should reinforce our favorite tips and stop giving all these tips. And maybe once a month, give a new tip of the week. If you disagree with this, email us at support at thelandgeek.com with the subject line, uh, you know, new tips, please. Okay, Eric, what's, what's a, if you say Jot Not Pro, man, yes. <laughs> what's a favorite tip? <laughs> Actually, I think our theme this week is going to be quotes. So I am not going to bring back an old tip. However, I'll be prepared for that next week. Jot not pro. Okay. Um, but uh, so my quote today is, it is better to conquer yourself than to win a thousand battles. Then victory is yours. So to me, um, you know, that, that speaks to just establishing good habits, right? So, you know, conquering the battle of distractions and, um, you know, all the other things we have going on and establishing good habits that um, enable us to make progress in our businesses. So that's what I got today. I love it. I love it. Uh, Bearland Aaron, what's your tip of the week? Do you have uh, also, a, uh, a wise quote? Well, first, first, I have to tell everybody that after my irreverence towards Mark last week, <laughs> I used his tip of the week, which was this, the uh, unsubscribe robot on a particularly unruly email account I've had since college. And 
Uh, I would get about 20 emails a day in there, mostly junk. It would become my, my junk mailbox. And uh, I started using that, and now there's like crickets in just a week. So it's, I, I, I think I've recovered a mailbox that is now usable for, for good stuff. So kudos, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I really, you know what? I really appreciate it because so, so often I get mocked and uh, rarely does anyone come back and be like, you know what? That little tip was actually useful. So thank you. I appreciate it. It's too bad Mike Zano's not on this podcast. I know. I know. <laughs> they needed to hear he's that. He's usually the one doing the, the, the mocking. Hey, mock, great tip last week. Yeah. <laughs> really, really wasted two hours of my life. Thanks. Oh, 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 by the way, everyone in, I apologize to everyone in Massachusetts for that, for that accent. <laughs> okay, so uh, my quote, it was actually something from Reader's Digest. Um, a lady, Laura Vanderkam, who wrote um, Mosaic and 168 Hours, she had this little thing on there on time management. And this is the quote. Uh, I once interviewed a woman named Teresa Daytner who owns a construction company and has six kids, including twins. She told me that she never tells herself, I don't have time. Instead, she says, it's not a priority. I could say I don't have time to make handmade Valentines for my children's classmates, but if you offered me $100,000, I'd do it quickly. Since that's not going to happen, I can acknowledge, I can acknowledge that this is a matter of priority, not time. So I thought that was really useful um, because a lot of things that we do, we say, oh, I don't have time to do that. Well, it's really just a matter of priorities. So get your priorities, um, decide what they are, you know, and we talked about it in a previous podcast uh, about the 12 week year and the one thing and, you know, getting the priorities right in your life or in your business. And then, decide what you're going to give your time to because you do have time you just have priorities so that was my quote great quote i love it i love it tate wants to like jump on you Marilyn aaron but are you gonna do it tate give what? it tate no, are you gonna attack uh, the quote no i i actually like that quote i think it's really true i i think that we can do anything we want to do. It's just whether or not we want to do it. Right. And right, that's, yeah. I, that, you know, I kind of have a mindset approach to uh, today's tip of the week and it's the mind is everything, what you think you become, right. That plays in perfectly to what kind of everyone said thus far. And if you want to become something, you know, start telling yourself that you're that way, you know, start telling yourself that you can do anything. And I guarantee that success will follow. I know it. So that's kind of my tip. Um, and I'm feeling that way after boot camp. There's some changes that I want to make and some things that I want to do better. And it's not that it's too difficult or it's too time consuming. It's just I need to do it. And uh, it starts up, up here, up top, right? Mindset shift. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, my tip of the week is going to be from... Uh, Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And um, in there, he talks about uh, most people wait for like inspiration, then motivation, and then taking action. And he's like, that's not really how things work. Because really, it's action leads to inspiration, which leads to motivation. So my tip of the week is take action now and, and give yourself a set of timer. Five, five minutes taking action, right? Like, like I can imagine Eric Peterson's like, okay, I want to edit my website. But when he starts thinking about all the things he has to do, he's like, ah, I don't want to do it. And he's, then, you know, he procrastinates, right? Where if he's just like, okay, I'm going to take action just on the header, only going to work on the header. Once he starts taking action, it leads to an inspiration like, oh, wait, that only took a minute. Now I can, I can see this little sidebar here. Like I'll work on that. And that leads to the inspiration, the motivation and becomes, you know, an interesting thing. So I would say start with the action and the, the inspiration, the motivation to follow. Don't wait to when you feel like doing it because it ain't going to happen, right? Uh, Tim Ferriss talked about this guy who wrote like 57 novels. He's like, all I write is 200 
crappy words a day. And next thing you know, it like leads to, you know, beautiful, prolific novels. So you like that tip of the week? Yeah. yeah. No mocking, Tate? Nope. No, you're, you're good. All right, man. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. I want to remind everybody that uh, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it system to get paid automatically, notifications, automated, to always make more money. Can't get more time. It's going to save you so much time. It eliminates all the headaches of collections, down payments. It is a true set it and forget it system. You can log in. Your borrowers can log in. And it eliminates those two annoying headaches I used to always have. Hey, Mark, how do I make a prepayment this month? They can do it. And also, hey, Mark, what's my current balance? They can do it and see it. Um, it is a phenomenal tool, geekpay.io. And, um, you know, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. That's all we ask. Three little favors. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit. So thanks, everybody. Guys, we're going to try to do this. Yep. Actually, hey, Mark, before we end, uh, we should once again plug Scott's uh, Accounting for Land Investors webinar that's coming up. Yeah. I took I it last year yeah, that and it was amazing. I'm taking it again this year for the updates. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't considered or thought, or if you're on the edge, man, you need to do it. Um, I, I got my book straightened out, you know, because of that program, I can talk to my accountant at a much higher level on, on my books in this business. It's just, you know, an amazing, an amazing program he's put together and I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, I think if you go to scotttodd.net forward slash accounting, you can, you can register um, for that. And I, I agree, especially with the people that are like sort of fuzzy about the actual expenses involved in this business. Um, you can see how, you know, you can account for everything and what it's really looking like on a sort of Scott's profit first system. So um, that's a great plug. So scotttodd.net forward slash accounting, I believe. Um, Anything else? No? Eric and I need to go take a nap. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom ring. Oh, my gosh. I, Can we delete I hope, that? We didn't have Scott so. counting us off. I don't know. I know. I have, I have a feeling we just lost a bunch of listeners for next week. We need a metronome. You know, it was really good at the end of boot camp, though, when we did it. No, it was great. It was great. Having, like, you know, the, the attendees do it. You know, for how musically talented Eric is, he should have recorded it and had it plug in. And I, lo- I love awesome. when Mike Zato's at dinner is like, he's like imitating Eric. He's like, I'm playing my guitar. I just sold 10 properties. I just sold 10 properties. I'm just playing my guitar. Where's Mike right. when we need him? Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing that justice. We're not doing that justice. I know. How, how, about, how about Damian Lupo? Who wants to be Damian Lupo? That guy's like, oh, yeah, I was just in uh, Japan. And the guy's like, uh, the sushi chef's like, do you want fresh sushi? And like, he's like a real live shrimp. He chops the head off, chops the tail off, puts it on rice. <laughs> like the thing's like the head's still moving. <laughs> Damian Lupo is the most interesting man in the world. I, I never get tired of that guy's stories. No, he, his stories are apt. Who was he playing poker with the other night? Remember? Some celebrity. Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, it was for charity. So it's no big deal. But yeah, yeah. Like, the, like he's like these endless cool stories. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm hanging out in Madagascar. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. The most interesting man in the world, hands down. Yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, whatever. The only, the only thing that, like, you know, gets me to sleep at night is knowing that I have three children and he has zero. I'm like, ha, I win, Damien, while you're out doing, like, safari or, you know, some other crazy adventure I get to, you know, have my teenagers completely ignore me. Ha, I win. Hey, (laughs) I know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, Damien, how many eye rolls did you get today? Oh, that's right. Zero. (laughs) Oh man. Tate, you, you got this to look forward to. So do you, Eric. You're selling me on it.
No, oh, it's, rules. It, you know what though? They they that. are fun. It's, I have to say, like they are really fun when they get to the teenage years. It's it's really different. Yeah, you have you have a lot better conversations with them. You know, you kind of get into that adult level and you get to help them experience life and guide them at an adult kind of level. And it's the conversations are make it definitely worth it, you know. And then then you go into dad mode and say something and you get the eye roll, but it's all worth it. Yeah, it really it really is. It's it's great. What were you going to say, Eric? I was just saying I, I have the eye rolls to look forward to. Oh yeah. I mean, oh. yeah, that's but that's normal. Like you, when you're a yeah. teenager, you have to rebel. Like it's otherwise like why why would they ever leave the house, right? <laughs> like it's like part of development. You know, oh, mom's going to do my laundry and make me, you know, all this food. It's like it's like they're too comfortable. Like they have to rebel. Otherwise, they can't leave the nest. So I love it. I'm like, I only have to deal with this for another two years. It's great. <laughs> so it's awesome. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. Um, All right. See you next week. Thanks.